Hi everyone! So, I hope you're all good. <laughs> if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that I've been in a reading slump. I have been in like one of the worst reading slumps ever. I've only read two books. Two books? Two books in March. I'm ashamed. Oh. I am supposed to be reading House of Leaves for the Literary Dead Book Club, which I am co-hosting this month. However, not acting. <laughs> I'm too terrified of it that I'm just not reading. Like I literally haven't, I've read maybe 20 pages in the past week and a half. So I thought, let's just do an episode of Wrapped Up where I'm gonna unwrap one book, we'll do a little reading vlog for it, and we'll have some fun. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be good, good. we're all gonna have fun. fun. <laughs> I'm hoping this is gonna get me out of my reading slump. Like I'm praying. I am praying I'm gonna get out of that reading slump. Now, I cannot remember anymore what books are wrapped up. I have no idea. <laughs> and I'm gonna be kind to myself and I'm gonna say if I want it, I can unwrap two. Like if I'm not happy with the first one, like totally happy, I can unwrap a second one and then choose between them because I have to be kind to myself because I literally haven't read in a week and a half. <laughs> I'm drawn to like the shortest ones. But that's like a tall book. Or that one looks kind of cool. Okay, I was drawn to this one initially, but I have no idea what it's gonna be. But let's just unwrap it. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I was so not ready for that. I think this is like, yeah, this is 440 pages. It's not quite as short as I was hoping. This is an Ember in the Ashes, which is a fantasy book, but. You know what? I could go for this. It's not as short as I was hoping because I'm literally, I've got like two and a half days to read whatever I pick, which isn't bad for me usually. That's usually how long it would take me to read a book, but not me in a slump. <laughs> so I'm gonna unwrap another one. I'm gonna unwrap this one and then choose between the two. I wonder if I can get the audiobook for that on script. Oh, okay, the audiobook is on script. How long is it? It's like 14 hours, which is, <laughs> that's not like a short audiobook, but we could give it a go. Let's unwrap one more and then choose between them. Hello? Oh, The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. Okay, this is shorter. This is like, 340 pages, but the font is tiny, so I don't know if it would actually be much of a difference. Thrillers read very fast, like they do read quick, but this thriller has been on my TBR. It's one of the oldest books on my TBR, if I'm honest, and I just don't know if I feel it. So I think we're gonna go with An Ember in the Ashes. Okay, but when I first opened this, I was scared because it's not short, but I actually feel like some really high immersive fantasy might be what I need right now. This was very kindly gifted to me by Jasmine, so thank you Jasmine, and let's just get into it. A lot of people have told me they think I'm gonna absolutely love this, like it's gonna be a favorite series. So let's just get into it. Oh my God, I don't know how to feel. Ah! My big brother reaches home in the dark hours before dawn, when even ghosts take their rest. He smells of steel and coal and forge. He smells of the enemy. He folds his scarecrow body through the window, bare feet silent on the rushes. A hot desert wind blows in after him. Rustle. Okay, so I am about a quarter of the way through An Ember in the Ashes. I'm on page 112. And... <coughs> <coughs> Oh my god. I don't I don't quite know how to feel yet. So currently we have dual perspective between Leia and Elias. Leia's brother has just been arrested and taken away for treason and she has kind of like come to meet the resistance to try and get their help. Elias is a soldier at the military academy and he is just about to graduate but he is having second thoughts and kind of wants to desert. And that's kind of like where we're at the moment. I, I imagine their stories are gonna come together at some point, but it may be like in the second book or something. But I just, I don't know how into it I am. Like I'm enjoying it, but I'm not in love with it. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Some of the writing feels just a bit average. Like a bit like, okay. Like there's nothing captivating me about it. I'm not a fan of the audiobook. Like I tried it, I listened to quite a bit of the start with the audiobook and like if I go and cook or do anything I probably still am going to listen to the audiobook just to make progress but 
I'm not listening to it whilst I read along physically anymore because the girl narrator was like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really a fan, if I'm gonna be honest. Like some, sometimes you just have audiobooks that you like and audiobooks that you don't like. There's nothing wrong. Like other people will love that audiobook. I just didn't. It just reads as quite young to me. So maybe I'm just not the target audience for this. I'm hoping I'm gonna get into it a bit more. I don't know. I don't know if something's wrong with me. I don't know if I'm a bit broken because I haven't had a book yet this year that I've loved. Like that I think, other than maybe the, the Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl, but that is like the third book in a series that I've loved. Like other than that, there's been nothing that is gonna be in my favorite books of the year. Like I guarantee you there's gonna be, none of that is gonna be my favorite books of the year. So I don't know if like I'm a bit broken and there's something wrong with me and I'm just not enjoying reading as much or if this just isn't quite it. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. But I'm gonna read on. We've only read a quarter and I've listened to interviews with Sabah to hear. I've done courses on Skillshare that she's run and I've listened to like podcast interviews that she's been on. And I've always found it really interesting to hear from her. I think she's like a great speaker and I love how she speaks about writing. So like we should be having more success here than we actually are. But anyway, I'm gonna go read to halfway and then I'll check in with you again. said yesterday I wanted to get about three quarters of the way into this. I'm not sure if I did, but I did. I wanted to get about three quarters of the way into this yesterday. That didn't happen. I would like to defend myself, but sadly that's the truth. Without like getting too much, okay. <laughs> I don't need to give excuses, but like I didn't feel very well. I kind of fainted, kind of, for like two seconds. Um, so after that, I just stopped reading the rest of the day and just <laughs> laid in bed and watched YouTube because I was not all there. But I'm, I'm feeling much better today. I'm halfway through now. I, I don't think I'm enjoying it. Fuck off. And here's the thing. I went, oh my God, I went on Goodreads and everyone and their mom gives this book five stars. And I just, I actually don't understand it. I'm actually, I'm not enjoying it. And I feel really bad because it's like such a well-loved book, but I, I don't get it. I feel like the characters are very one dimensional. Like it just feels so simple. It feels so convenient. The writing, I'm just not personally vibing with. I don't think the writing's bad. I'm just not connecting to the writing. It just, you know when like writing you either vibe with or you don't. Like Erin Morgenstern's writing, for example, I vibe with. A lot of people don't. A lot of people like hate her writing style. I just feel like that's the same thing with this for me, but the other way around, I'm just not into it. But yeah, it just feels too convenient. Like things are happening and I'm just like, okay. And the way that characters are acting, not necessarily our two main characters, but like all the other characters who aren't fleshed out at all is very unrealistic, I find. I'm just very upset because I'm not enjoying it and I and I want to and it's so well loved and I just can't understand it. At the moment it's maybe like a 2.5. Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just wish things would get better. I'm trying to get rid of them, but nothing seems to stay the same. I don't know you guys. I really don't know. I'm just not interested. I kind of want to DNF it, but otherwise this vlog won't exist. So we're gonna we're gonna carry on and I'm gonna go read to three quarters of the way in and hopefully, hopefully I will have had a change of heart. So you guys. I I'm really not I'm so bored. <laughs> I'm so Bored. I'm so bored. Can you give me a little bit of space, please, today? I've come to the realization that it it has split storylines. Like, so we've got Leia and we've got Elias, and we're following their two storylines. And I don't typically like that. I 
don't always dislike books that in like the strange case of the alchemist daughter series the second and third books kind of had that but if i dislike a book chances are we had split storylines you know multiple povs with split storylines and i just don't think i vibe with it i like to have like a linear story with perhaps some like branches come on coming off of it like i i think i find it a i don't get attached to either one as much as i want you know i don't get attached to either storyline as much as i would with one storyline and also it begins to feel a bit formulaic like we go to one, we go to the other, we go to one, we go to the other, where I, I want to be surprised in the structure of the story. Like I don't want to always be able to predict what's going to happen. And I don't feel like either chapter, like either perspective, the chapters are ending in a way that particularly leaves me wanting to read on and excited to read on, which is what it needs to do. But I'm really sad because this was, I believe in my list of the 21 books I want to read in 2021. And it's just so disappointing. Like it's really, really disappointing. That's so upsetting. Another thing I would say is I'm not typically someone who takes issue with mention of sexual assault and rape in in books particularly when it makes sense in the context of the book so this is very military inspired you know it's all about these characters in the military and so I think it makes sense because there is that toxic culture around women um, and consent and stuff in those settings like typically as well in like a lot of historical books you hear this criticism where people complain about it and I can't say I I've ever felt that way but it is making me a little bit uncomfortable in this one I don't want to say it's done like poorly or wrongly because I don't think it is there's just something about the frequency of it that is making me uncomfortable personally in this one like the constant mention of rape there's kind of like one of the villains in this his main personality trait is how he wants to rape women you know and uh just like kind of the discussions around prostitution as well and stuff like that in this book I think it makes sense in the context and I'm not out here saying it's done wrong but it's making me uncomfortable and I'm kind of like okay I don't want to hear about that anymore you know because it's it's mentioned quite a lot yeah I would say if that's something that you know triggers you then be very wary of this because it is a very frequent mention but yeah like I said the characters sis the characters <laughs> the characters are so one-dimensional all of them oh my god i'm not gagging let me know what you thought of this book if you've read it because i feel like i'm really alone in this like i feel like everyone else loves this book unless something crazy happens in this last quarter i really don't think i'm gonna continue on with this series yeah i'm gonna go watch the football now and take a bit of a break and then I'm gonna finish it this evening. Isn't it just because you've not, not been reading, not been feeling myself? Reading. Yeah, I did say that earlier. I said it could just be a me thing. Because I haven't loved a book this year. Like loved, loved, loved a book. Like I haven't I've only had like two five stars, three five stars. And even then, I don't know. I feel like if it was just me, I would at least be giving it like a three. Cause everyone, when I go on Goodreads, everyone is out here giving us five stars and I just don't understand we decided it's time for football now like, no, stop filming okay right we're gonna go watch the football bye <laughs> i finished an ember in the ashes and i'm gonna give it Two stars. I'm gonna give it two stars. No! <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't go anywhere. It just didn't go anywhere. And I didn't feel like the ending was like its own ending. It was just setting up the rest of the series. Do you know what I mean? Like I want a satisfying arc to the story and maybe in some ways it was but maybe I was just so dissatisfied with the book on, a, on the whole that I was never gonna be happy with the ending. I will say my favorite scene in the book did happen in this last quarter. There was a battle scene which was really interesting and made me wish in a way that this book had been adult, an adult book. And of course I understand why it's not. There was like a hint of what could have been if it was an adult book in that battle scene and it just made me long for it. I just have to accept that this wasn't for me. 
and that a lot of people love it. Maybe something's wrong with me right now. We can all accept that, but this just for whatever reason wasn't for me. And I'm very upset about it. I don't particularly <laughs> I want to talk about it anymore because I'm I'm just really sad. It was like one of my most anticipated books. And I will put in, I will put in for you a picture. Oh my, look at how good the ratings for this are. Look at, look at how many people give it five stars, then four, then three. No one out here, no one is out here giving it two stars apart from me. Like I'm really upset. And I really scratched my head and I wonder, where's God when you need him? And I feel bad. And you're all, you're all allowed to chime off in the comments about why I'm wrong. I just thought our main characters were so predictable. I don't like it when a character is stuck in the same inner monologue the whole book. I probably would give Seba to his books. I know she only just finished this series, but whatever she writes in the future, I probably will give a go because like I said, I really wanna love her stuff. I felt like we could have hurried stuff up a lot more and almost had like the second book in this. But of course it's not gonna happen because it's YA and like I, under I understand all my critiques. Like I understand why it's not the way it is, but it doesn't change the fact that I wanted it that way. One positive is that I do feel like it's kicked me back into reading again. I feel like so accomplished having finished this book. And I feel excited to read again. And like, I was just sitting here looking at the books on my book cart. And I was like, okay, oh my God, I'm so excited to read you. So I feel like it has accomplished that aim, which is a good thing because I now need to read this. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that this will be next weekend's reading vlog, but we shall see if I can like do that. I don't know if I have it in me. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of this if you have read it. I'm sure you'll be saying how much you loved it and how wrong I am and that's okay. I can accept that. I can accept it. Um, if you've gotten to the end, comment a fire emoji because of ashes, ember in the ashes. Yeah, comment a fire emoji if you've gotten to the end and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.